I have standing with me Greg Powell, who is assistant director of the Dolphin Shows. Uh, Greg's going to be telling us a little bit about marine land and about how they train the dolphins. Greg, um, how I understand marine land is celebrating a special year. That's correct, Dottie. This is our 50th anniversary year at Marine Land, and uh, we're planning quite a calendar of events for the uh, summer celebration. The official day will be June 23rd, and uh, we're all real proud of that. We are the uh, world's original attraction of this type, and uh, it should be quite a summer. We're looking forward to having a, a real bang-up summer. Sounds like you're going to. Well, Greg, what is the purpose of Marine Land? Why was it opened, and what, what was the purpose of it? Well, originally, you have to go back to the mid-1930s. Three gentlemen of uh, various walks of life had a common interest. There was uh, Cornelius Vanderbilt Whitney, C. Douglas Burden, and Leo Tolstoy, who was actually the direct descendant of the Russian novelist Ilya Tolstoy. Now these three men were all interested in putting together an environment where they could control underwater photographic type of movie making. Uh, that's what the uh, original purpose was. They looked around the world for a location that was suited to uh, this type of endeavor. It was rather far-sighted at the time. No one had ever really attempted anything on that largest scale. If you've ever kept an aquarium tank, you might know how difficult that is sometimes. But to put together a tank full of sea life, various types living together in uh, 450,000 gallons of water, that was uh, quite a challenge. So in the mid-30s, they decided on this area, just below St. Augustine, about 18 miles. They liked it for its natural beauty. The natural cove to the west of us was where they could bring in the collection boat and bring the specimens directly in and put them in the tank here. So our rectangular tank was the very first of its sort in the world. It, uh, it became a... Uh, a studio for underwater movie making as I said but then they realized they had quite a bit of a public attraction here there was a great deal of public interest when uh, people realized they could actually have a more window to the sea so uh, 1938 it opened to the public and thus you have 1988 or 50 years of being in business and uh, it grew tremendously the first year the history of this of this uh, original uh, photographs I've seen. There were cars lined all the way up A1A as far as you can see. It was it immediately, be, immediately became a public favorite spot to come and uh, it's it's grown considerably. In the 50s we added the stadium area here with this tank plus the circular tank and it's been growing ever since and is still under a uh, process of growth. Well it's really a marvelous place to visit um, the ocean arena, um, ocean arena, is that what you call it? Oceanarium was a oh. word first coined by the three gentlemen I mentioned. Yes, they came up with that. That was a, another first. But an oceanarium was, was designed to give the public idea of this is actually a representation of exactly what you'd see out there in mm -hmm. the ocean. And they do live and interact the same way together. Well, now, where, did the, where does the waters come? That was the engineering marvel. What What is the real secret to marine land as I said the location is beautiful we have the ocean right on our, off our beach here that fresh seawater is the key now that's pumped right in collected in a gallery system and filtered through a series of filter beds and then through an elaborate system of pipes and valves can be fed to all these tanks here so it's pure fresh seawater and the species here thrive as evidenced by the fact we have the longevity record for dolphins, we have the best birth record for dolphins, successful births, and uh, right here behind us is the grand old dame of dolphins, that's Nellie. She's 35 years old, just this past February, and uh, that's the oldest in, uh, in the world. Then they live to be about 30, 35 years old. Current studies have found that dolphins uh, in the wild have been uh, reckoned to be in their 40s, with mm -hmm. females living a bit longer than the males. Well, now, I understand there's been a lot of uh, research done on the communications of dolphins. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any comment to make on that? Well, here at Marineland, we've had a couple of uh, in-house PhDs by the name of Caldwell, husband and wife team, <clears throat> 
pardon me, they've been uh, studying dolphins and communication for over 15 years here and have been recognized as leaders in the field. And they've made many contributions and have been published widely on uh, what they have discovered with uh, their years of research here. And dolphins seem to have an interesting uh, way of communicating their mood and location to their fellow dolphins. When born, the Caldwells discovered a baby dolphin immediately begins practicing as a signature whistle. Mm -hmm. And that's like our fingerprint. It doesn't change throughout the dolphin's life. And that actually uh, is the way the mother knows that sound. The, uh, of course, the infant dolphin knows the mother's sound. And they can tell if it's a murky water situation that uh, they can tell where each of the two are or their mood. If it's an ang anxiety type situation, it'll be repeatedly, very rapidly and intensely, where if the dolphin's calm and uh, at peace with the situation, you know, then it's just sort of a uh, slower, repetitive type mm -hmm. sound. But this is, one, this is the basis of uh, communication that the uh, Caldwells originally discovered here. What can people expect to see when they come to marine land? Here at Marineland, we have several types of dolphin shows and underwater dive shows. Right here, in, in, we're standing in the stadium part of the show. This is the Educated Dolphin School. Now, what we show people here are learned behaviors, and uh, we could tr probably try and get an example of that sort of thing right now. How you doing? Want to stand up for us now? That's a good girl. Yeah, real good girl. Let's get up again. Good girl. Now, a little behavior like that takes a number of weeks to sometimes months and uh, when you get it in what we call uh, show readiness it's a reliable learned behavior that you can call on. Uh, upstairs we have a series of high jumping behaviors that we display. Some of the leaps go up to 18 feet in the air. It's a rather thrilling show, high paced, high intensity. If you'd like to go upstairs we could get some shots of that. All right, let's do. Let's okay. go watch it. Greg will be back to tell us more about marine land after these messages. Where's the closest one-stop service center for your car? Ocala? Leesburg? It's right here in Lady Lake. All automotive and transmission. This new up-to-date can handle everything from an oil change to transmission overhaul. Four full-time experienced mechanics are on hand for reliable service on domestic, foreign cars, trucks, and RVs. Free towing and senior discount on major repair. For service miles ahead of the others, it's all automotive and transmission. Highway 27 and Guava Street in Lady Lake. Hi, I'm Jim Oliver from ERA Orange Blossom Gardens Realty. We receive correspondence from people all over the United States who want to relocate to the gardens. We need a large inventory of homes to compensate for these potential buyers. Orange Blossom Gardens Realty knows your home better than anyone else. We'll be happy to give you a free market appraisal. So call me today or one of my professional sales staff at 753-4000. We are about ready to witness one of the shows. Greg, how many different shows are there? Well, we have three different types of shows going on here and two different underwater shows. Now, going on behind us is the Educated Dolphin Show in the stadium. Here you see a series of performers exhibiting various skills and abilities, all under the guise of a dolphin school. Right now, there's a sports routine going on by our star athlete, Poncho. You'll also see echolocation ability demonstrated, the sonar capability of dolphins, and then various other stunts like uh, our trained surfer, Harry Harry, a small dog we get to do a surfboard ride around the tank. It's always a crowd favorite. And a few high jumps and thrills and spills, a comedy routine with a, uh, with a dolphin doctor that needs to do an examination. And then from here, from the stadium, the public goes over to our circular tank. Now this is the top deck high jump show. There, there are eight Atlantic bottlenose dolphins doing high jumps, flips, and spins in an assortment of uh, physical power and grace. Uh, you'll see everything from a long distance tail walk to a uh, triple twister. And we finish that show off with an 18 foot triple, we call it the triple rocket. Three dolphins at once. And uh, after that, the public's invited to see a sea lion show in the back of Whitney Park, further behind us. We have three California sea lions that have learned some routines, and uh, that's uh, usually a quite humorous little production. 
Also in Whitney Park, we have a penguin exhibit, and several times a day the penguins are fed, and that's accompanied with an informational talk about the tropical penguins that we do keep here. Also, now after that, we have two underwater dive shows. And our two uh, tanks here, the rectangular and circular tank, our, our uh, scuba divers go down there with baskets of food and hand feed the species in this tank, sharks, I should say they hand feed the sharks. But they do feed the fish and turtles, moray eels, you'll see uh, sawfish, skates, uh, all sorts of it, uh, marine life that you'd see right here in the Atlantic Ocean. Now following that, they go into the circular tank and do a beautiful underwater ballet with the dolphins. Now, across the street, there are several other types of exhibits. An otter exhibit and uh, a Florida wild bird exhibit. We have probably the largest freshwater exhibit here. Uh, it's actually a cutaway of something you'd see out in one of the freshwater rivers of Florida. All freshwater fish and various species in that tank. Also across the street, we have the uh, 3D movie, quite well known. Uh, uh, won an award for the best 3D of its kind. It's called Sea Dream, and that's presented oh, several times a day in our brand new theater across the street. Mm -hmm. Now, I noticed uh, there's two different colors of dolphins. Um, mm -hmm. What is the difference? Well, we are fortunate to have a variety of the Atlantic bottlenose dolphin here that's not seen very often. You're referring to our blonde dolphin, and uh, it's actually a mutation of the color gene. And uh, it's not actually an albino situation. That, that's a little bit different animal altogether. But these blondes are quite rare. They were uh, originally seen in the Gulf of Mexico back in the 60s. And we're real proud right now to say we've got a growing family of them because a little over uh, two years ago, our original couple of, uh, our original pair of blondes successfully delivered a youngster and uh, his name's Racy, and he's learning a uh, whole routine right now. It's coming along very well, and uh, we've got high hopes for him. He's showing great promise. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. Uh, they're very rare then. Extremely rare. In fact, the only place in the world you can see them. But now, does a dolphin have its own personality, and does it rebel against its trainer or the other dolphins at any time? Well, you do see personality swings. They have moods just like people, and each one's a little bit different. And uh, as far as uh, personality swings to the rebellious side, a lot of people have likened them to about a 8 to 11 year old youngster in that respect. They, w they will be quite playful at times and inventive in various ways of playing with you, but uh, usually the rebellious part doesn't, doesn't really surface until it's mating season. And that's what really... Uh, causes us a little bit of difficulty from time to time around here. It's actually quite humorous. I mean, we've, we're used to seeing it. We expect it. We, we're, we know when those seasons are coming up. So we treat it as uh, good-naturedly as possible. I mean, you, you never punish a dolphin. Positive training is just that. Everything is based on positive reinforcement. If a dolphin acts up, we just put them aside, put them, put them away, let them cool down until they're a little bit more in a mood to cooperate. And that's, that's really the only thing you do to a, uh, shall we say, a cantankerous dolphin. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't we stop now and watch the show? Sure, good idea, guys. Okay.
Here we are at the Ocean Arium. Greg, why don't you tell us what we're seeing here? What you're seeing here, we call this the rectangular tank part of the exhibit. And uh, in here, we have a complete representation of the marine life you're liable to see anywhere up and down the coast of Florida. All sorts of aquatic life, uh, from turtles to moray eels to sharks and every type of fish, from sporting fish to uh, your common grunts and spots are seen in this tank. And what we have is a uh, couple of brave scuba divers go in there several times a day and put on a show, hand feeding the various species in here. And uh, it's quite exciting. They've developed quite a few interesting little twists to uh, their end of the show, besides just feeding and being swarmed by all the uh, uh, marine life. They've uh, managed to work out some turtle spins and uh, turtle rides. Uh, I've seen a few of them uh, hanging on to the big sawfish. We have a 10 foot, foot long sawfish in here. And that's, that's kind of exciting for the public to watch. So it's a good show. It sounds like it. Um, the men that go in aren't afraid of the sharks, I guess. Well, they have a respect for them, but uh, they are constantly supervised and they do use a buddy system. And uh, before and after the actual uh, public part of the shows, they feed those sharks as much food as they can eat. <laughs> so bet. by keeping the, all these uh, predator fish well fed, we try and cut down on the losses of our prettier fish that we don't like to see uh, consumed. Tell me, Greg, have you ever tried to work with any of the sharks? No, sharks aren't really subject to uh, being trained very much. I mean, you can get a conditioned response to a certain degree. We had a, a very small lemon shark in the tank that learned the, where the fish came from, which was out of that little basket and on the bottom of that tank there the diver re replenishes his supply from. So that lemon shark would wait right by that basket and uh, he became a problem because he'd try and take the fish right out of the diver's hand. So we had to stop that practice. And uh, we do consider our diver's safety as primary. Mm -hmm. Greg will be tell us more about marine land after these messages. We receive a lot of nice compliments about the homes here in our model village at Orange Blossom Garden. But did you know that you can buy everything you see right here? It's Southern Lifestyles Furniture, the easy way to shop for that new bedroom, dining room, or living room set. We've got the brand names you want, and browsing through the models is certainly better than the crowded atmosphere of the furniture store. As an OBG resident, you'll get a 15% discount on everything you buy. Think of us as your own furniture store, Southern Lifestyle, in the Model Village at OBG. Sheer Madness.
Dear Madness, we can work miracles. Here we are at the Sea Lion Showcase. Greg, just what is a sea lion? Well, sea lion belongs to the pinniped family, which means thin-footed. Now, in that family, they have some close cousins. Everyone's probably more familiar with seals. And uh, they are very closely related. There are a few differences between sea lions and seals. Uh, so the sea lion has a little ear flap or ear covering, and a seal doesn't and they swim a little bit differently. A sea lion uses the longer fore flippers to propel himself, and a seal swims with his hind flippers and steers with the front. Now the sea lion, you can tell, has a real advantage when you see him up on land. He can turn that hind flipper forward and use it like a small back foot and support his weight on it, where a seal can only drag his flippers along the ground behind him. So this gives sea lions real advantage in land mobility. That's why he's really the uh, animal of choice amongst marine mammal trainers because of that land mobility makes him easier to mm -hmm. work with. Now these are California sea lions and they've been with us about a year and a half. What the show consists of here are a series of behaviors and we train these animals much on the same principles as we use with the dolphins and uh, they've been doing quite well. Now most people don't really see sea lions this large in a show. We were kind of uh, in a situation where we, we brought them here for a rehabilitation and management. They were all originally stranded rescued animals. And then uh, we managed to, to work up a routine with them, uh, somewhat to our surprise. We really thought they might, not, they might be too big and too old already to work mm -hmm. with. Like I said, most places start out with them as young babies. But uh, that big fellow out there, Zero, he's probably uh, close to 500 pounds now. He's, roughly eight to nine years old. When he's fully grown, he could reach over eight feet long and 1,000 pounds of muscle. They're very impressive animals. They've got very strong jaws, and they do have teeth. You may see that. Originally, they say they're on the uh, evolutionary ladder of uh, being descended from bears. So oh, you can imagine mm -hmm. how powerful those jaw muscles are. Now, these animals will consume about 15 to 18 pounds of fish a day in the course of their routines out here. And uh, the trainers concentrate on one animal at a time in the show. We have mm -hmm. one trainer works with each animal and uh, you have to pay close attention to the animal because they are very subject to the same uh, rutting season or mating desires as you see in the dolphin, mm -hmm. only even more so with these animals because uh, they have, as I say, that quickness of movement they are extremely fast and agile animals, so you have to keep your eyes and your wits, uh, your eyes open and your wits about you around here. Well, are their personalities much like the dolphins, or are they a little harder to get along with? They're a with? little bit harder to get along with. The brain size is smaller, of course. I don't think they're as intelligent, but they have good short-term memories. You know, you can actually uh, rely on a routine once the concept's understood by a sea lion. He'll mm -hmm. he'll remember that for some time. He will definitely remember the first person that works with him and the longest association. That mm. will be the best response he will get from that person. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that is a definite uh, fact that we've seen by working with these animals here. Thank you, Greg. It's been a most interesting day. I've really enjoyed it and I'm sure our viewers are going to. Well, I hope, I hope so, Dottie. It's been a pleasure having you here today. And we'd like to uh, invite all your viewers at Orange Blossom Gardens to come over and see us, especially this summer. It's going to be an exciting summer here. The uh, high dive team will be starting up again in uh, next week, and that's a real exciting show. So we've got a lot to offer, and we'd like to see you all come over and visit. Well, I'm sure there will be a lot to come over. All right. We'll be going back to Marine Land in just a second, but first we have these announced. The Orange Blossom Squares will dance to the calls of Ernie Felstead this Sunday night, June 12th. Sonny Thomas will cue the round dancers. The Plus Workshop starts at 7 o'clock with the dance to follow from 8 until 10. All square and round dancers are invited to attend. Also a reminder that there's a Plus Workshop held every Thursday night from 7 until 9 p.m. All square dancers who want to improve their dancing skills are invited to attend. There's going to be a dance in the Recreation Hall tomorrow night beginning at 8 p.m. The entertainer will be performing and the cost is $2.50 per person. You can pick up your tickets in the Recreation Business Office. 
The Pennsylvania Keystone Club will be getting together at the Big Top at La Plaza Grande to see Carnival and the Front on Wednesday, June 22nd. If you are a Keystone Club member and would like to attend, then you should sign up on the bulletin board in the Recreation Hall by Saturday, June 19th. The Massachusetts Bay Staters will be holding a meeting on Thursday, June 16th at the Soot Club. It will all start up at 9 in the morning, and the meeting on the 16th is to plan the events for the month of July. Anyone from Massachusetts is invited to attend. There will be a meeting of the Connecticut Nutmeggers Club on Monday, June 13th at 1 in the afternoon. The meeting will take place at the adult pool, and everyone from the Nutmeg State is invited to attend. We have a couple of announcements for you. Big weekend coming up, beginning on starting up on Saturday. Now there's going to be Max Walters and the Blue Notes at Fiesta Days from 11 until 3 o'clock. They've changed Fiesta Nights to Fiesta Days. Also, Bill Jordan will be at Tio's Courtyard to put on another dazzling performance. Once again, that's going to be tomorrow from 11 until 3. But coming up in just a couple of hours at the Blue and White Tent at La Plaza Grande, there's going to be a big concert taking place. Carnival and the Front and David Slater will be, will be there. Uh, right now, we're going to go back to Dottie Vanderbeck, who has a few final words from Marineland. Dottie. I hope everyone has enjoyed the show this evening. The admission price is $9.95 and it's a wonderful place to visit. And I hope all of you will take the time to visit Marineland. Good night.